I think how easy it was. Uh, it was, I usually am one of those writers that has a lot of creative angst and existential angst and it feels so hard to get writing and to stay writing. But um, working on something with someone else just made it fun, you know, it was just kind of a fun project to do with a friend and it it was the easiest thing I've ever done and one of the most fun things and, and the result is still good, which kind of taught me a lesson about maybe I do things the hard way typically and I don't need to. During the time that Elizabeth Smart was missing, I had a lot of ideas about, uh, a lot of questions for, for myself about what it would feel like to be a teenager in, in the community where that was happening and what it would feel like to be part of her religious community while that was happening and how it might affect my faith or my ideas about God. And then once I transplanted that into a fictional setting, a totally different type of situation, then it just became its own thing. And then I was writing about that and my own thoughts and feelings about what was happening while she was missing. But I also was relating it to, I lived in California when Polly Class was kidnapped and I had similar questions and feelings. So it was kind of a, um, what do you call that? Conflation of those two things plus just made up stuff. You know. I've gotten, you know, it was, it, I've gotten great feedback from readers and it was very well reviewed. At the time it was my best reviewed novel. It is my worst selling novel still, which is one reason they changed the title and changed the cover to try and see if it could find a new audience. Um, and I don't know if that was an issue with the title and the cover and, or the marketing of it or if it's because it sort of addresses faith and maybe, maybe people look at it and go, I'm not interested in that so I don't want to read it. Um, but that's really not the primary thing about the book. Um, it's just been definitely one of my quieter books in terms of sales and popularity. But I was happy with how it turned out. So that's really, as a, as a writer or any creative professional, all you can ask for is that you, you, that you know you've done the best you can do and then where it kind of lands in the marketplace is not something you have a lot of control over. There are certain things that help now, which is I know when it's going terribly and I feel like I can't do it, I know that I always feel that way and I know that I always come out with a book. So I just try and remind myself this is part of the process, it'll pass. Um, and there are certain things with the more experience I gain that I just know about writing novels, you know, generally where what should be happening around page 30 or so, you know, or like what how am I going to start moving toward the end? I kind of know craft things like that, but in terms of the story and just doing the work, it's still hard. It's, it's hard work, which is why most people who say they want to be writers never finish anything, because it's harder than you think it's going to be. I do think that um, part of why I was drawn to YA and why that was the voice that was coming out of me was I, I was still processing things that happened between, you know, age like 13 and 25. But it is true that now that I've had, you know, now I'm kind of interested in processing the experiences from like 25 to 40. And, and I do think there's probably some work for adult audiences in my view, in my future. Um, you know, I don't know how much more I'll have to say about being a teenage girl or being a teenage boy um, after you know six or seven books we'll see we'll see um, I'm open to doing all kinds of stuff I do think my style has changed it's gotten a little more complex um, a little wordier <laughs> maybe my first couple books were pretty short and spare and I, I do think my style and voice has changed in a way that might down the road lend itself more to stories about adults, but, but I don't know. Um, there's, there's a lot of room for all kinds of writing in the YA category still. I don't know. I am asked that all the time, usually by people in New York who are like the people in the publishing world who realize how many of us are living here and they wonder what's going on. Um, you know, a lot of my 
friends here who write for the young adult or middle grade market write um, uh, fantasy type stories and and a lot of them come from an LDS background and I think there's a really rich tradition of of arts from what, from what I gather since moving here there's a really rich tradition of, of the arts in the history of the LDS church and there's a value in storytelling and there's a value too in kids you know there's there's a lot of stuff for kids here because it's a it's a culture that values children and I think that's part of it. <laughs>